Welcome once again. This is Pinnacle Professional College, and today I bring to you another session on strategic case study. We've been doing a series on the entire syllabus going through strategic case study. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, please do so. If you haven't subscribed as well, please do so, so that anytime I post, um, you would get a notification. So let's delve into um, our topic for today. Today we'll be looking into critical success factors. Critical success factors. Um, so we touched on this briefly in our previous lecture, but um, I would like you to, I would like to go back and just explain what critical success factors are, just to give you an understanding of what we are talking about. So we said that critical success factors are basically factors that are essential to the success of a business entity, factors that are important or critical to the success of a business entity. So um, technically what that means is that um, it's basically every organization has a strategy, right? And the strategy would consist of several, you know, broad guidelines or objectives that the organization wants to pursue, right? But within that strategy, there are components which the organization must critically fulfill in order to excel and outperform competition. So critical success factors are basically the components within your strategy in which the organization must do really well at to outperform competition. And that's the definition Johnson and Scholes gives. They give, right? They say that they have been defined as those components of strategy in which the organization must excel to outperform competition. Right. So when management are analyzing the market and customers in the market, they should try to understand which factors are essential to succeed. So critical success factors are basically factors that are essential to succeed in, right, in order to outperform your competitors. So there are factors which are very important or critical, and there are factors that are not so important you must understand the distinction, right? So if you want to win, you need to focus on the factors that are critical. And that's what critical success factors are all about. And then once you've identified the factors that are critical, you go ahead and set targets around the factors um, and link performance to those targets. So basically, so for example, um, just think about it this way. As an individual, when you enter a new year, you typically have things that you'd want to achieve. Same as an organization, right? So, or even for your life, over five years, there are a couple of things you might want to achieve. There are some that are really top of your list, that are critical, that you really want to do, and there are some that are not so important, right? So what does this mean? It simply means that if the success factor is critical, then you are focusing on the items or on the components of the, your strategy that are critical. So as an individual, you focus on things that are critical to your success, right? And leave out or you know spend less time on things that are not so critical. So that's what critical success factors are all about. In our previous lecture, we explained this example. So if you haven't watched it, we use this example to explain critical success factors. Very, very important. Very, very important. Now let's talk about marketing and critical success factors for products and services. The previous example considers the critical success factors for a new business venture, which is the accounting firm that we talked about, right? So strategic planners might want to identify the critical success factors for a particular product, right? So here you are moving from the organization to a product or from a company to its product. Yeah. And when we are trying to look at 
the critical success factors for a product or a service, we are looking at the key things, right? The key features of a product that must that that the product must have in order for it to be successful with customers. So if you pick, for example, um, a phone, what are some of the critical things that um, a phone must have in order for it to be successful in today's age, right? The phone must have a camera. These are, this is maybe not so critical because right now every phone has a camera, right? But for a phone, um, a critical success factor could possibly be, you know, very, very good imaging and photographs, right? In these days, if your phone doesn't have a very, very good camera lens, very, it's not able to take very, very good videos, people do not want to buy it. So that's just an example I'm throwing out there. So these are the features that the product must have if it is to be a success with customers. Right, so the, your critical success factors must relate to customer needs, and that's where the marketing angle comes in. So you look at your critical success factors and how it relates to customer needs. They are the features of a product or service that will have the main influence on the decisions by customers to buy it. So if a customer goes to a store and wants to buy a car, right, you should think about what are the deciding factors that are critical to the purchase. What are the deciding factors that are critical to the purchase? And those things would become your critical success factors and you market your product based on that. You market your product based on that. So let's take an example. When we look at the example given here on parcels, a parcel delivery service might identify critical success factor, factors as collecting parcels from customers as efficiently as possible and delivering it very quickly. That's a critical success factor. When you look at sports cars, right? Sports cars, for example, they may, they may decide that the critical success factors are, you know, top acceleration, top speed, very, very good engine capacity and possibly sell at a cheaper price than competitors. When you look at a banking service, so what we've mentioned, we, we let's add a service. Let me add an, another example. If you look at the banking service, a critical success factor would be low waiting times, right? You do not want people to be in the banking hall for too long. So you want to introduce some kind of efficiency where they can, you know, uh, they can speed up processes in the banking hall so that there are no long queues in the banking hall. Now let's move on to critical success factors and key performance indicators, all right? Key performance indicators, the short form is KPIs. So in your strategic planning process, you should be able to identify critical success factors at each stage. Right, it's very, very important. So at each stage of the uh, strategic planning process, you need to identify what the critical success factors are. So critical success factors should be identified during the process of assessing the strategic position. Right, what is the strategic position? Right, and the strategic position is basically the position of the organization strategically within the context of its environment. All right, so you should identify critical success factors at that stage. And during that period, you need to understand what are the main reasons why particular products are successful. So why is Benz, Mercedes-Benz successful in the car industry? Why is BMW successful? That's the kind of analysis you do when you're assessing strategic position. Now, critical success factors are also important when you are making strategic choices. Right, strategic choices are basically strategic decision a business entity will make in order to achieve a competitive advantage. They would select strategies that they think will be beneficial 
in order to outperform competition. These are strategies where the entity has the ability to excel in the critical success factors for its products or services. So basically, these are strategies um, that give that an organization has to decide on um, in order to excel in those critical success factors for its products or services. So number one, we've talked about, we are looking at the strategic planning process and how it relates to uh, the uh, critical success factors. We've talked about strategic position, we've talked about strategic choices. Now let's move on to strategy implementation. Critical success factors are also important for strategy implementation. Critical success factors are important for strategy implementation. And when you're implementing strategy, you need to set performance targets. Performance targets should be assigned or set for each critical success factor. This involves deciding on a measurement performance that can be used to assess each, each critical success factor and then setting the target for achievements within a given period of time. Very, very important. So what are we saying here? When you're trying to implement a strategy, it's important that you have to break down this strategy into performance targets. What do we mean by performance targets, right? So you would have a strategy. Let's say your strategy is that in the next five years, you would want to make revenue of $10 million, right? That's broad. You now need to break it down into performance targets, right? So you zone down, come to the functional level. Okay, let's look at our marketing team or our commercial team who drive our sales. What are the different teams within the commercial function? And then you assign targets for them. So you say, team A, you be responsible for achieving $1 million this year. Team B, you be responsible for achieving $3 million this year based on certain parameters, et cetera. So performance targets have to be set for each critical success factor. And this involves deciding on a measurement of performance, right? So you are basing this on a measurement performance, and then you set quantified targets for achieving that within a given period of time. So measured targets for Critical success factors are called key performance indicators. So these performance targets are essentially what we call KPIs. They are KPIs. That's what we mean by uh, key performance indicators. So number one, we talk about strategic position. Number two, we talk about strategic choices. Number three, we talk about strategy implementation. And this is where performance targets are set or measured targets are set. And these measured targets are called KPIs. Now, Johnson and Scholes um, have developed a six-step approach to using critical success factors. So let's delve into this six-step approach. Johnson and Scholes have suggested a six-step approach to achieving competitive advantage through the use of critical success factors. Number one, this is the first step. The first step looks, looks at profitability on the long-term level and the short-term level. So number one is identify the success factors that are critical for profitability. What are the success factors that are critical for profitability, All right? So, that's the first understanding that you need to have. What are the success factors that are critical for profitability? Right. What do you need to do to achieve profitability in the short term and the long run? So examples may be selling at a low prices, improving the features of, the, of your product, improving service delivery, et cetera. It is always useful to think about customer needs, like we said, when you're thinking about critical success factors. And also, it's also useful to think about the four piece of the marketing mix. We've discussed the marketing mix. So if you haven't watched that video, please do so. So when you're thinking about critical success factors, you cannot leave out customer needs 
and the marketing mix. And the marketing mix. So number one is on profitability. Number two is on critical competencies. What it's necessary, what is required in order to achieve superior performance in those critical success factors. What do you need to achieve, right? What do you need? Sorry, I should say. What do, what do you need in terms of competencies in order to perform? In order to perform, what do you need to achieve in order to perform um, in terms of your critical success factors. Identify what is necessary in order to achieve a superior performance in the critical success factors. This means identifying what the entity must do to achieve success, right? Don't forget that when you have a target, let's say I want to achieve profitability of, let's say, um, 10% of revenue or 20% of revenue. You need to come and sit down and ask yourself what is required in order to do that, right? Because you don't achieve a profitability of let's say $10 million from thin air. What are the critical competencies that will help me do that, right? So what must I do, right? So if a critical success factor is low sales price, right? A critical competence might be strict control over costs. So from number one, if let's say the organization wants to achieve profitability through low selling prices, right? And then the critical competence here would be strict management of costs or cost rationalization or proper budgeting around costs or strict control over costs. If a critical success factor is around prompt delivery after receipt of orders, prompt delivery after receipt of orders, a critical competence here might be maintaining adequate in inventory so that you, there are no shortages, so that when I place the order online, they don't tell me, oh, um, unfortunately, we've run out of inventory. So that will be a critical competence. Another critical competence would be fast production cycle. So basically, you need efficiency around your production cycle and around managing your inventory in order to promptly deliver orders. If a critical success factor is low level of sales returns, right? you do not want people to be returning what they buy. A critical competence will be to ensure that there are zero defects in production. There are zero defects in production because defects are usually the reasons why people return products. Very, very important. Very, very critical. At this point, if you have any questions or any concerns, you can certainly leave them in the comment section and I'll definitely respond to it. So let's move on to step three. The entity should develop the level of critical competence so that it acquires the ability to gain a competitive advantage in the critical success factor. So what does this mean? Number one, you are looking at profitability, right? Profitability, number two, you are looking at critical competence. Number three, you are looking at developing the critical competence, making it better, owning the critical competence, developing it, right? Very, very important. Then number four, you identify KPIs. Remember we said KPIs are measured targets. They are measured targets. So identify KPIs for each critical competence. So it says here in step four, the target KPIs, if achieved, should ensure that the level of critical competence that creates a competitive advantage is obtained in the C, uh, critical success factor. So basically what we are trying to say here is that you identify appropriate 
KPIs that are essential for each critical competence. So number one is what profitability. Number two, critical competence. Number three, development of the level of the critical competence. Number four, KPIs. Number five is giving emphasis to developing critical competences for each aspect of performance. Let me repeat that again. You give emphasis to developing critical competencies for each aspect of performance. So here is similar to step three, but here you are developing competencies or critical competencies for every aspect of performance. Now, what does this mean? After you've identified your KPIs, your KPIs are those measured performance targets. Remember, right? After you have those measured performance targets, now you have to develop critical competencies for each aspect of that performance, right? In line with your KPIs, so that it becomes very difficult for your competitors to achieve or match you on that level. So number one, again, profitability. Number two, critical competencies. Number three, developing critical competencies. Number four, KPIs. Number five, developing critical competencies for each aspect of performance. Then number six is monitoring. You monitor the firm's achievements of its KPIs and also monitor the performance of competitors very, very important. You monitor the achievements of target KPIs and also monitor the performance of competitors. Six steps. Please remember these steps. They are very, very crucial. Now let's move on to competitor benchmarking. Competitor benchmarking. Benchmarking is a process of comparing your own performance against the performance of someone else. Right, so you are comparing your performance against a standard or an industry standard. And usually when you're comparing yourself, you compare yourself with the best. So the whole idea around benchmarking is you are comparing yourself in order to identify differences between your performance and the performance of the benchmark. If there are differences, then you might want to close the gap and raise your performance to that level. A typical way in which people improve performance is to copy the practices of the ideal standard or benchmark that we are looking at. So that's what we, are, we talk about when we talk about benchmarking. In Strategic position analysis, benchmarking is useful because it provides an assessment of how well or badly an entity is performing in comparison with its competitors. So in the strategic planning process, one of the things you do is strategic position analysis. That's one of the things you do. You do strategic position analysis. And under this stage, benchmarking is useful because you're trying to figure out how well your company is doing in relation to competitors. You know, strategic position analysis is all about your organization within the context of its environment. So you are looking at your organization in relation to other organizations who you are competing with. Very, very crucial. So benchmarking is key when it comes to strategic position analysis. There are several methods of benchmarking, several methods. Number one, we have internal benchmarking. So let's explain that. What is even internal benchmarking? An entity might compare the performance of units within the organization. So let's say, so let's say a typical example, let's say um, a bank has maybe 100 branches, right? And one of those branches are like excellent in their service in all areas, right? So they are the standard, they are the best performing branch. So in internal ben benchmarking, um, the organization will compare all of its branches to that standard. 
It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Another sense in which you can explain internal benchmarking um, is, for instance, you have you know, a company with um, a telecommunication company with several retail offices. Let's see, Vodafone with several retail, uh, MTN with several retail offices, right? So you look at what is the standard, what is the best performing retail store, and you compare all other retail stores to that. Identify any gaps and where you need to raise performance for other retail stores. Now let's move on to operational benchmarking. An entity might compare the performance of a particular operation with the performance of a similar operation in a different business entity, All right? So, so what does this mean here? You are basically comparing a particular operation, right, within an organization with another with the same operation or the same kind of operation in another organization. So let me give an example. Let me give an example. You look at, for example, you compare, you can compare the marketing function in Vodafone or the marketing operation in Vodafone to the marketing operation in MTN. That's a typical example of operational benchmarking, right? So if let's say the marketing operation in MTN is superior as the standard, you can compare the marketing operation in Vodafone to that. The example given here is that, for example, a book publishing company might compare its order handling, warehousing, and dispatch systems with, with the similar systems of a company in a different industry that has a reputation for excellence. Right. So that's operational benchmarking. That's operational benchmarking. Now take note of this. Let me highlight this. So it has to be a similar operation in a different business entity in a different industry. Right. So again, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be marketing function in Vodafone to marketing function in MTN. It could be marketing function in Vodafone to the marketing function in, let's say, um, a construction company. If that construction company is the standard or, the, or has a huge reputation for excellence in that regard. I hope that makes sense. So operational benchmarking arrangements might be negotiated with one another with another business and entity. So you have internal benchmarking, you have operational benchmarking, then you, like operational benchmarking, please take notes, and I'll say this again, an entity might compare the performance of a particular operation with the performance of a similar operation in a different business entity, in a different industry. So the industry has to be different. Now let's move on to competitive benchmarking. An entity might compare its own performance and its own products with those of its most successful competitors. All right, so a company might decide to compare its performance um, with that of su its successful competitors. All right, so unlike internal benchmarking and operational benchmarking. One, what you need to know here is that competitive benchmarking has to be carried out without the knowledge and cooperation of the selected benchmark. Competitive benchmarking must be carried out without the knowledge and cooperation of the selected benchmark. So because it's competitive benchmarking, when MTN is trying to compare itself to Vodafone, they do not do that at their knowledge of Vodafone. Right? They are trying to out-compete each other. So this is something they do on the side. Right? This is something they do without the knowledge of the selected benchmark. So to backtrack again, if the selected benchmark is MTN and Vodafone wants to 
do a competitive benchmark against MTN. They do they will, they will not they will not do this with the knowledge of MTN, right? They will do this without MTN knowing, basically. They will do this without MTN knowing. And that's what we mean by competitive benchmarking. That's the key difference here between competitive benchmarking and internal benchmarking and operational benchmarking. Now let's move on to customer benchmarking. This is a different type of benchmark. This benchmark is a specification of what customers expect. An entity compares its performance against what its customers expect, right? So basically com customer benchmarking, you are comparing the actual performance of a company to the expectation of its customers. Very, very important. So these are the four types of benchmarking. These are the four types of benchmark. Competitive benchmarking started with Xerox in the United States in 1982. The company manufactured photocopier machines but had lost a large share of its market to Japanese competitors. So the company set up a team to compare Xerox against its competitors, right? So this is where the whole thing started. You might want to read this a lot further to understand and get a background of competitive benchmarking. Now let's move on to methods of competitor benchmarking. Methods of competitor benchmarking. So there are no standard methods. And you do not expect competitors to provide information about themselves that um, is not required by law, right? So hey, you want to do this benchmarking. The competitor is not required to give you any information. So one of the areas where, or one of the places where companies will get a lot of information is in the published financial statements, right? In the published financial statements, if you read it, you might get a lot of information about the company. So what are some of the methods of, of competitor benchmarking? Number one is the publish financial statements of competitors should be studied. Publish financial statements of competitors should be studied. You should analyze the company's financials, see things like segment performance, um, geographical, or segmental performance, et cetera. Look into the published financial statements. That's number one. Number two, financial ratios obtained from the financial statements of the competitor should be compared with similar ratios. So whatever financial ratios that you get from the financial statements, you can compare uh, with similar ratios for the company. All right, so financial ratios which we might be talking about later on, are basically, um, they are basically um, financial measures, right? To assess different lines of the financial statements. You know, so yeah, the financial ratios would typically measure things like liquidity, gearing, profitability, etc. In addition, trends in performance and in the ratios over time should also be monitored. So monitoring things like sales, profitability, um, gross profit margin, net profit margin, et cetera. Where there are significant differences in performance, the possible reasons for the difference should be considered. The products or services of competitors should be analyzed in detail. Right, so you have to look at the product or the service that the competitor is providing and analyze it and analyze it, right? Try to understand it. Right. Do some kind of technical analysis on the product to understand the product features, 
and possible reasons why the product is being purchased. Another way you can gather information on competitors is by talking to customers and potential customers who have had dealings with the competitor. And there are some customers who will be willing to discuss what the competitor is offering. All right, so you can talk to customers. We forgot, we didn't mention um, that one of the key things that you need to compare is pricing, pricing, pricing of competitors. So why do, why is my competitor charging at this price? All right. Are there significant differences between what the competitor is charging and what my company is charging? You know, and if so, why? Right. These are all management considerations that need to be made. Very, very important. Competitor analysis should include an assessment of the critical success factors of all the firms in the market. So when you are trying to analyze competition, you should also assess the critical success factors of all the firms in the market, right? What are the factors that are critical to their success? So by that, you understand the reasons why certain companies are succeeding and it might be for different reasons. It might be for different reasons. So this is where we would bring today's lecture to an end. In our next lecture, we'll be diving into the value chain, the value chain. So if you, if you haven't studied the value chain yet or you want to refresh your memory on the value chain, this will be the best time to so stick and stay with me. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. And please share this video with a friend. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.